OCR GCSE Computer Science Episode 3 Memory In any computer system there are four key components inputs, outputs, the CPU and storage. In a previous video we've already covered the processor and the cache and in this video we will be looking at the main memory. So when a program needs to be executed, the program itself needs to be loaded from the storage to some sort of memory. This is so that the processor, which is where the FDE cycle happens, can then access that program and do whatever it wants the user to do to it. And this is why we have the main memory. So the main memory acts as an in-between between the processor and the storage giving the processor access to the things in the storage for a temporary amount of time. Now the main memory, also known as the RAM, stands for Random Access Memory. Now although this is not part of the specification, just to help with your understanding, the purpose of it being called random is because it means that you can access the data at any time in any order. So the RAM acts as temporary storage of programs that are being executed currently. So say your computer is on right now, all of the windows, screens, applications, everything you're using right now is being stored in the RAM. But once you turn your computer off, since you're not using those programs, so they're not currently being executed, they will no longer be stored in the RAM. Hence, computer scientists call temporary memory volatile memory. But sometimes the RAM gets fully used up because it has a limited capacity. But even when it's fully used up, sometimes the user still needs more space. So the solution to this problem is called virtual memory. Now, virtual memory is when you get a piece of storage and it disguises itself as extra RAM. And the memory that's used less goes into the virtual memory. And this makes space in the RAM for more currently used ones. But key note that accessing it from the virtual memory is a lot slower. And because virtual memory is really slow, that means that you may have experienced this problem yourselves, where you have loads of tabs open on a window and the computer starts to buffer and take longer. When you click on a tab, you have just abandoned for a while because they aren't in use, so they've been moved to the virtual memory. Now the final type of memory that we're going to be looking at in this video is called the ROM, the read only memory. Now we've talked about volatile, which is a temporary store. This is an example of a non-volatile store, which means that when you turn the power off, the memory is retained unlike the RAM. Now the RAM loses all of the data as soon as the power goes, whereas the ROM retains it. The ROM, holds information such as the basic input output system and this is needed every time you open up your computer because think of it think of it every time you open up your computer you're going to need the same programs to happen the signing in program etc and the issue is with this non-volatile form you can't edit it but with something like the basic output input output system, this doesn't need to be edited. You're going to sign in on your computer the same way every time. Now it's time for some exam question practice. So this question is, explain why the basic input output system is stored in the ROM, the read only memory, and not the RAM, the random access memory. Pause to answer. And let's look at the answers. So the basic input output system must be stored in non-volatile memory so that the contents are not lost when the computer turns off. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe. I do a range of GCSE subjects and also make sure you subscribe to both Noel for GCSE and in the future Noel for A-Level. Thank you and see you soon.